Hi, I'm Soul, and you may remember me from such famous hits as that guy that landed an entire 1KO punch on Duck Hunt that one time, stop asking me to double or nothing, and this still isn't Cuphead. I'm a soon-to-be former new gen that was brought into Smash 4 in early 2015 and was broadly recognized as the number one Mac in the world between 2015 to 2017, solo maining them exclusively in those years before largely stepping back from Smash 4 competitively. So, Little Mac in Smash 4 was probably one of the most polarized characters in the game. He saw some of the highest usage and fan support and direct proportional juxtaposition to tier placements and tournament results of any character. His main mechanics centralized him around KO punch and sets would ride or die on its connection while encouraging opponents to simply disengage. In initial reports from Sakurai in 2014, he stood at the highest loss rate of all collected characters on For Glory, and then promptly received a patch 1 nerf to the general reveling of the 3DS community at large. This time around, however, Nintendo has been far more keenly aware of his problems, and they've made several adjustments accordingly. Love him or hate him, here's the scoop. In regards to Smash Ultimate, it's key that we recognize that the game is still heavily in the developmental zone. And anything I discuss today will be subject to change as early as before I even release this video right now. Alright, so let's get into the meat of it. Move breakdowns. Jab. So Jab now automatically transitions into a Gentleman Jab 3 rather than Rapid, which was a brilliant change that also mimics the way all other jabs auto-transition. Its percent rack is, I, I don't know, at worst underwhelming, but I think I like the spot that it's in overall. Um, unfortunately, Rapid Jab remains in a bad place, about where it was in Smash 4 post 1.04 patch. It was always susceptible to downward DI into the opponent's shielding and then punishing you for it at lower percents, and it remains vulnerable to frame 1 to 3 aerial responses. It has open frames between each of the little hitboxes it puts out, unfortunately. This would often translate to Little Mac getting True Shoryu'd out of his Rapid, or getting Jigglypuff rested out of his Rapid. I mean, for example, it was so problematic that opponents could stand up into your Rapid Jab at ledge, and then initiate theirs, and they would consistently beat you out. This problem persisted in my experience in the demo as well, though I think I noticed a little bit of reduced end lag, so that was nice. Dash attack is largely similar, and instant dash attacks do not exist in this iteration of Smash, so it comes out slower. However, Max Dash Attack blessedly can now kill in the 115 to 130 range, and this will be significant for him. I did not verify whether or not it could still chain into itself, but this is this is less likely this iteration. F Tilt is new and improved with a highly reduced end lag, providing Mac with his first genuine safe on shield response tilt. It's amazing. It's bringing so much to the table right now, and it brings massive utility to his kit all around. Finally, answers an age-old problem of his lack of shield options. Its hitbox still drops the second uh, jab, as it were, particularly on opponents that are falling or in the air, but it seems to have been adjusted somewhat and is more consistent all around. I go back to the lab on this one and tweak that hitbox just a notch further to make sure it connects in, in all of its intended circumstances, but it's looking great. Down tilt has likewise taken a safe on shield route and exchanged it for higher in lag and effective upfront commitment than its predecessor. Unfortunately, it's dropped most of its combo options due to the in lag. That said, it still functions in specific percents with KO punch and upbeat. Though, though, the window's tighter. Okay, so up tilt, formerly among the best tilts in the game in my opinion, has retained most of its glory and excelled even further. But in exchange for a crippling flaw. As it stands right now in the current build, up tilt leaves at least three open frames between each of its own combos. And opponents with faster aerials are just going to punish you for landing the attack. It becomes non-functional in most matchups due to this glaring flaw. I mean, just look at Kak's broken little face. And hopefully, it'll be ironed out, you know, in the development cycle. The big upside and hope that this move carries should be that it's fixed an amazing knockback reduction, and its angles have been altered so that it knocks the opponent, like, right above you. Keeping opponents more centered to Mac and launching them at a 90 degree angle with up B follow-ups Definitely a lot of kill potential there, and some strong combo potential too. They just need to fix up that frame data just a little bit better. More hit stun. Smashes. Outside of some potential percent adjustments, up and down smash seem mostly unchanged to me, but F Smash got an amazing quality of life buff in that like all the angles and variants no longer carry the dead zones of the previous iterations of Smash 4. Even when intentionally trying to provoke the former dead zones, and I mean I had I had my friend walking against me, Mac would still connect. He can finally have Smash characters that are directly in front of him, and I almost want to cry for that. Anyhow, so up angle F Smash retains its great hitbox, though I could not verify any combo potential from it in my test time, and down angle continues to decimate shields. 
It's made more powerful by the removal of power shielding on block initiation too, which is nice. Aerials. Across the board, they seem to have had a slight damage buff, and actually as of this moment are kind of as prominent combo openers. No, I don't know why. So, Nair is in a great spot these days. It's finally positive on hit, it allows for setups and combos on landing, but it also removed the cheesier DK ladder combos and suicide Nair drama of patch 1.0.4. Fair has a strange timing this runaround, but nearly safe on shield thanks to the slower shield drop mechanics having increased shield drop frames from 7 to 11, and honestly, I like where it is. Down Air remains my favorite Mac aerial in all of its beautiful ridiculousness. This time around, it also sports an interesting new addition to its repertoire. Though unsafe, it is safe at higher percentages, ranging around the 100% plus mark, and it actually sets up true combos. Fatal ones, believe it or not. Up air. I think it may be a shark combo setup opportunity. Time will tell. Okay, I just legitimately forgot back air was a thing. Um, please don't hate me. I'll get back to you on that next round of testing. Grabs and throws. Max grab range has been extended, finally, and its frame data made notably faster in my experience. So this is phenomenal, and was a glaring issue that they've addressed, and I'm really proud of them for, for noting that. Down throws in a good spot right now, with reduced horizontal trajectory and lower knockback creating effective follow-ups around certain kill percents. The move can still be dismissed though, through proper outward DI for most characters. However, big bodied characters cannot escape this official kill throw, while smaller characters must DI very efficiently to do so. It's a great change and again a good middle ground to punish shield for a character designed around ground neutral. The, uh, the, the other throws didn't really seem worth mentioning in my experience. I didn't note anything notable in their changes outside of perhaps a couple of mid lane percents. Specials. Previously, Little Mac was not known for sporting particularly effective specials. That's changed this time around though, and Nintendo has really tried to include them as a viable part of his kit. Straight Lunge. Straight Lunge previously had no justifiable use competitively for Mac, and this time around, that's finally changed. Many know that it can be reversed, but fewer know that it carries momentum from startup and that it can be shield cancelled even faster. It also now releases far earlier than its previous incarnation. This leads to B reversal, like momentum shifts, kind of akin to a mini Diddy flip kick, all kinds of crazy options at your disposal and landing options too. It'll finally be a worthy tool of inclusion in your gameplay. Uppy is racking more damage than ever. It has a solid vertical height and speed, and the thing no one is discussing, boys and girls? It ledge snaps. Thank you, Sakurai. However, I have had some friends report that it is dropping for them, the Uppy that is, in the earlier hitboxes, and Mac Nation is now fervently pleading for this hitbox adjustment. Counter's damage multiplier appears to have been shifted from 1.3 to 1.425, which likely implies a higher base knockback as well. Furthermore, its hitboxes have been adjusted and it effectively connects with opponents that strike Mac from below as he's landing. The end lag is reduced significantly, the momentum that it carries you has been reduced in return. This huge buff now allows Mac to run off stage and guard with counter against hostile recoveries, and then successfully return to stage without struggle. The addition of this to his kit is simply colossal. Jolt Haymaker oozes potential. It has a lowered ground distance and an increased aerial distance in ultimate. It seems to still carry too much in lag for follow-up tech chases and punishes, but is now safe to land at 0% and actively places your opponent in tumble. Furthermore, as it no longer places Mac in a freefall, it has become a viable edge guarding tool that can kill as early as 65% without risking Mac's life. Well-known facts that can also be acted out of with up B, and it is hopeful that this move produces enough shield stun to effectively punish platform camping this generation. It would solve the camping problem single-handedly. KO Punch has had drastic overhauls and even false rumors and myths perpetuated about it in this development cycle, but I'm here to dispel the cobwebs. I held KO for 60 seconds in testing. It does not disappear unless Mac is placed in tumble. The buffer period through which you can lose KO Punch, however, does seem to be smaller in certain cases. Its kill power has been reduced from 15 to 31%, but in exchange it now has a high-reaching vertical hitbox that covers platforms, and it deals about 10% more damage than previous. Its end lag has been significantly reduced. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that move breakdown. 
My friend Ducky, a fellow Mac main, worked hard to compile all of these numbers for you, so please make sure to follow his Twitter and show him some love at DuckySSB for his amazing efforts in providing them. Now with that said, let's break down how the game has changed and what that means for Mac. So for this section, I'm going to be speaking a little bit more off the cuff. There probably will be less correlating, you know, video to concept footage here. But a lot has changed inside Smash Ultimate, and I think it's worth addressing and how it affects Mac specifically. So, dashing has seen a lot of buffs, and I'm really excited because you can pretty much do anything out of it. Uh, Mac has phenomenal dash dance opportunities now, and I think that the changes to dashing as a whole are just going to make him notably more efficient at aggressing landings, at baiting opponents out. That land speed's really going to come in handy, and I think walking Mac, although of course still useful, uh, will be will not be the staple anymore. The character will finally be able to kind of let his wings loose and fly. Power Shield's looking great this game. One of my biggest concerns was its interaction with multi-hit moves like F-Tilt, but it turns out if the first part connects into a held shield, uh, the shield stun will keep you under lock so that you cannot power shield the second part. Very useful, going to be significant for him. Additional cool factoid, you can power shield and then dash out of power shield. It's actually amazing. And this is going to be really big for getting in on opponents with like aerial spaced hitboxes. Think Shulk, think Cloud. Power shield their attack on the way down then run on in. The biggest change that I disagree with is the severe reduction of hit stun, which is leading to a general lack of combos for the vast majority of the cast. Some continue to hold them and they become kind of outstanding in their performances, but a lot of characters, Mac included, suffer from a lack of combo game and bread and butter startup options. So I think that one of the biggest things that they can do is probably return, I don't know, three, maybe four frames of hit stun to the majority of a lot of attacks, and that goes that goes cross-cast too. We're talking not just Mac, but really most characters in this game. I just want to see more hit stun in Smash Ultimate, because as it stands right now, the hit stun reduction is a massive problem. Directional air dodge is huge, because it boils down to landing options and return options. It's both a recovery tool and a landing tool. I mean, this mixed in with our faster tech roll speed is just going to be colossal for us. I, you, you have to understand that Mac has always struggled with getting back to the ground, and this will still be no easy task uh, this time around, but having these extra tools at our disposal will create valuable mix-ups that we've been desperately lacking. Oh, and side note, directional air dodge returns if you get hit, so don't fret those juggles. Not too much. So speaking of landing, we have so much more. Not just directional air dodges, right? But now our straight lunge operates as a tool to get to the ground off of weak aerials and then shield cancel immediately. Our side B will give us opportunities to act out of and change the trajectory of our movement. B reversing straight lunge specifically can even shift off momentum so that you don't have to take a hit to armor down to the ground in the first place. So honestly, landing is going to be better than ever for us. Recovery, much the same way, has a lot of new tools at its disposal. Side B without freefall is huge. That's an extra addendum. Of course, we have to be mindful, right, of the idea that we lose it should we get hit. But this is, this is a very, very valuable tool for us. It also retains a lot of the same old ledge snap that it did, kind of like a diagonal up appearance. And this is in an era where ledge snap as a whole is largely non-existent, so very valuable, very, very good stuff. It's also worth noting that Straight Lunge provides a lot of base horizontal distance with no massive charge up or commitment. So this too will kind of function in the same manner that maybe a core and back air does in helping Mac return to the ledge. It's just an additional tool in his kit to cover those distances. You can fairly say that Mac's recovery is no longer an excuse for why you're losing. Furthermore, this pairs with an amazing quality of life improvement. Max jump speed, max jump height, max air movement have all been improved in a slight to moderate fashion. Rapid jabs will no longer push you off ledge, which means that we will no longer be carrying rapid jab to side B, rapid jab to KO punch, rapid jab to up B. And this is an unfortunate loss of tech because I really liked this mechanic. I mentioned max tech roll earlier, but it's worth noting it's about 33% faster and 33% further, eh, based on my amateur estimate here. 
and he needed it. <laughs> it used to be about a bottom three tech roll in the game, so just huge for us. Smash Ultimate can't come soon enough. So on that note, I'm gonna just leave us off with some problems and suggestions given everything that we've taken in. I want to see more hits done in this game, and I want to see bigger combo game, and that's not max specific, that's really cross-cast. I think that the best way to reward an aggression-based smash is to make sure that when you break neutral, you get the most out of neutral. I would like to see our hitboxes adjusted a little bit so that they stop dropping so many different things. I want to see more consistent connection. And in general, I just don't like it whenever anyone gets punished for landing their attack. The only thing I could really add to my personal wish list is that we could act out of aerial side B sooner. This would mostly be to compensate for platform campers and once again reward aggressing their shield, uh, giving us additional options versus what is generally our primary problem in competitive meta. Overall, I think Max in the best place he's ever been. I think that he still has a little bit of a ways to go if he wants to be top tier, but I do think that he will wind up on the low end of high tier or the high end of mid tier, especially if they implement those suggestions that I've provided below.